together on the chorus. Number 47, number 47. All together lovely, number 47. Together. You could be seated, but let's keep our hymn books. Let's go to our hymn books, and let's turn to number 103. Number 103. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, 103 together. Together.
Let's turn over to 125, 125 together. We'll sing, I hear the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, Jesus paid it all.
Uh, let me go over a few announcements uh, for tonight. First, the most exciting thing on the list, the nursery meeting right after church on this side. I've been told it'll be quick, but right over here on the swing right after church. Uh, then Wednesday at 11 is Jolly 60s at its usual time. Thursday, 645 workers meeting, 7 o'clock midweek service, and no King's Kids or Flyers this Thursday. So no King's, King's Kids or Choirs on Thursday. Friday at 7 is RE Recovery. A couple of uh, upcoming things to keep in mind. Next Sunday is Easter. The service in the morning is at 1030 and then the evening service is the regular time, so 10.30 service on Easter morning. And then uh, down the road a little bit further, April the 22nd, that's a Monday uh, before preaching conference. There's a ladies' work party that night to try to spruce up all the property and the grounds. And then the 29th of April, that's preaching conference week. And Friday the 3rd is our college and academy graduation. That seems quick, but with the the new schedule, it's good to keep that in mind. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon on that Friday. Then as the ushers come, uh, Pastor Mitchell wanted me to kind of remind us of uh, what we're doing with our baptismal uh, system. Now, it used to be that every Sunday night, uh, someone would be down here up front at 5 o'clock, and if you or somebody you knew needed to get baptized, you'd meet down there at 5 and talk to one of the pastors. We made a slight change to that, so uh, what we're planning is the first Sunday of the month, is when we'll plan on having a baptism, if there is one. Prior to that Sunday, if, if you need to get baptized or you're working with somebody, there is a pamphlet for them to get to fill out. And then that Sunday morning, there'll be a Sunday school class just for those that are going to get baptized that evening. So they would need to come to that with this thing filled out. And then we'll still meet at 5 o'clock on that first Sunday. And there we'll talk about you know, the baptismal change rooms, kind of the mechanics of uh, going through the baptism and then the baptisms after church. So the first Sunday of the month, that's what we want to be thinking about. So if there's somebody in your ministry or, or your child or you uh, needs to get baptized, you want to talk to me or one of the pastoral staff and they can get you the, the pamphlet to work through. And then that first Sunday, if there's, if there's a need, hopefully we have many Sundays with needs, uh, we'll, we'll have that Sunday school uh, class for baptism and then baptisms that night. So, Mr. Shark, why don't you come and pray for the offering? Lord, we do thank you for this time to meet tonight. Thank you for a, a good day today on the buses and in junior churches and in here in the main service. And we do thank you for <clears throat> time to meet again tonight. Please help us to uh, have open hearts receptive to your word. Lord, help us to put aside the other things that are that are going on, be able to focus tonight. And I pray that you'll speak to our hearts. We ask that you bless the offering. Thank you for the uh, last several weeks, the offering, you being close to budget and meeting budget. And I thank you for that. I pray that you continue to bless our offerings. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let's take our hymnals again and turn over to 161. 161, we'll spread the tidings round wherever man is found. The Comforter has come. 161, let's stand together as we sing. Let's turn back to 67, number 67. O Savior, as my eyes behold, how can it be? 67. Together on the first.
going to be in our Bibles in Mark chapter 11 this evening. Mark chapter 11. The title of the message is actually a question and it's this, do you have faith? Do you have faith? And the Lord really um, spoke to me about this subject this pa- through this passage, um, oh, I don't know, about a month or so ago. And so I'm not preaching something just to preach to you. It's something God spoke to me first about, and I'm still challenged by it. And I hope it'll be a help to you. And I want to uh, begin here, Mark chapter 11. We'll begin in verse number 12, then we're going to jump down to verse 20. But we'll start in verse 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Uh, let me just read a couple more verses there. And, and seeing a fig tree... Afar off having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Now we drop down to verse 20. And in the morning... As they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursedst is withered away. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, 
and ye shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive, if any have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this passage of Scripture. Lord, it is a, it's a challenging passage. It's, it's daunting. It's intimidating as we look at it, as I look at it at least, and to think, well, this is what you said, and it's not necessarily what I see in my life on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's not a problem with you, it must be a problem with me. And Lord, I just pray that you would uh, renew our faith in you and who you are and uh, give us something from your word tonight. We pray in Christ's name, amen. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. And I think that was, uh, is something that we should aspire to that we walk by faith, not by sight. The truth is, oftentimes, we walk by sight, not by faith. We want to see something before we take a step of obe obedience. Lord, if you will do this, then I will do this. Uh, but the definition of faith is actually the opposite in the, uh, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But I want to see it. If I can't figure it out and it doesn't seem like it's going to, it, there's no way this thing can happen, then it's hard for me to take that step and, and trust God. You say, well, you should just trust God. He's God. I know that. I'm telling you what he's telling me. <laughs> and I hope that if you think the same way sometimes, you'll get some help as well. Faith involves believing something that we can't see. That's what makes it faith, okay? I'm gonna use an example. Uh, it's a personal illustration. I don't like to use a lot of them all the time, but anyway, shortly after coming home from the mission field, especially when it comes to faith, because like, you're gonna use an example of faith. Yes, I am. Uh, and <laughs> we came back from the mission field I had poor health, didn't know what we were going to be doing next. We still had some support coming in. Stewardship banquet was coming up. I was praying, okay, Lord, you know, support's going to be going down real soon. Obviously, you don't want me to commit to give a whole lot this time around, right? And uh, he, he led me to give a certain amount each month, and I said, okay, well, we'll do that. And then January came, and... Sure enough, income plummeted, sport was bottoming out, and I was looking at things, I said, okay, if I pay my health insurance, which I needed to have, I was in bad health, and then I gave what I promised to give, I would have $54 for the rest of the month, for a whole month to live off of. And I thought, hmm, well, we promised to God. It wasn't really an option, but I was just wondering, how's this going to happen? How is this going to work? What am I going to do? I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew what I was supposed to do, so we did what we were supposed to do. Now, let me say this. That was not easy. It was not comfortable. But we decided to do what God wanted us to do, and I figured if we kept our promise to God that we would ask him to keep his promise to us, which is give and it shall be given, and he did. A couple weeks later... Totally unexpectedly, uh, a check for $1,200 came in the mail. It's like, whoo, yes, <laughs> amen. And then the rest of the year, month after month, the Lord worked things out. He just knows how to do those type of things, amen. Now, I give that illustration not to say I had great faith. I don't think I had great faith. I, I couldn't see how it was going to work out. I did what I was supposed to do. I'd love to tell you that I had this great confidence that I just knew. I did know in the back of my mind, but I can't say that I was just like walking around, clicking my heels, saying, I just can't wait to see what God's going to do. It was more like, I can't wait to see what God's going to do here. <laughs> um, 
And God did take care of us. But I had to believe that God would do what I couldn't see him doing. That's not comfortable for me. I like to see things. Uh, in, in, a, in our text passage, Jesus placed an emphasis on faith. He talks about prayer, but really the emphasis is faith. And he wanted his disciples to have faith in God. Now, if you're saved, that makes you a disciple. That means he wants you also to have faith in God. So I want to consider a few simple thoughts. First one is this. We see an obligation for faith. Find it there in verse number 22. And Jesus, having say, uh, answering, saith unto them, have faith in God. Pretty simple. Have faith in God. Have faith. That is a command. That's in the imperative. Uh, God tells us to have faith. Trust me. Let me ask, then, do you trust God? In what ways do you trust him? Do you have faith? It's not just about having saving faith. We need to have that, but we need to live by faith day by day. You know, the longer we're saved, we kind of get in the motions of things. We know what to do and things we can just kind of make the Christian life go in cruise control. We can go out visiting in our own strength. We can give in our own strength. We just kind of do those things. We say it's by faith, and I believe it is. But sometimes when our world is shook up a little bit, then it gets difficult. And that's where faith really is a challenge. We have an obligation to exercise faith even when it's not easy, even when it is a challenging time. You know, sometimes there are some people who just don't want to trust God. They don't want to have faith because trusting God means I have, to tr I have to let go of control myself and let him have control. And I'm not in control of my circumstances anymore. I'm totally dependent on him to fix this or to get me through this, and I'm not comfortable with that. And so sometimes you're not that way either. And that's why people don't exercise faith. Again, why do some people not tithe? Because they don't want to trust God to meet their needs. They can look and say, if I give, I don't know how this is going to work out. But if I keep what I have, I know how I can pay my bills. <laughs> That's not faith. And, and really, the end of the story is, if we take from God, um, we're going to have problems. <laughs> Why do some people refuse, here's another one, to go to the mission field? Well, they don't want to take, trust God to take care of them there. And so because they, there's problems over there. You know, there's problems here. And people would rather take care of themselves at home, figuring, well, things are going fine here and now. Why would I want to risk something and do something like that? Some people refer, refuse to pass out a tract or to witness to somebody. And the reason is because they... They, they have fear, and they don't want to have to trust God to overcome that fear. Really, they, if it's uncomfortable to give out that tract, or it's uncomfortable to be rejected. And so we're not going to trust God to help us through those things. Um, we just have to trust God. There's been many times where I've given out tracts, and... I try to say something, it doesn't come out the way I wish it would have come out. <laughs> I get my words tied up sometimes, and it's like, man, I look like an idiot, you know? But you know what? It's really not about me at the end of the day, is it? It's about him and just trusting him. And at least track one out, right? At least that's better written than what's coming out of my mouth sometimes. So amen for that. And we've got to remember that the Lord wants to help us. And living by faith is his plan for our lives, even when it's uncomfortable, when we're asked or told to do something that we don't want to do or it's hard for us to do because now we're not in control. God commands faith. So the question then is, are you living by faith tonight or are you living by sight? You want to... You want to see how it works out before you'll take that step. That's not faith. 
So we have an obligation for faith. We see that in verse 22. We also see, uh, secondly, the object of faith. That's found in verse 22 again. He said, have faith in God. That's where our faith needs to be. Where is your faith? You know, sometimes it's in ourselves. Well, I can fix this problem. I, I can figure things out. We have faith in our abilities. We say, well, after all, God gave, us my, gave me the talent that I have or the wisdom I have or the experience I have. I'll just fall back on that. No, we trust God. When we trust ourselves, we fail miserably. But you know, some people put faith in their prayers. You've ever heard someone say, well, I tried that praying thing. It just didn't, didn't work for me. I've, heard, I've had people tell me that. I've tried praying. It just didn't work. Well, maybe there was prayer without what? Without faith. Um, sometimes we misplace our faith. We, we put it in that prayer. We think, well, if my prayer is good enough, right, people will afflict themselves. If I afflict myself enough and punish myself enough, maybe God will be pleased to, to look down and, and answer me. Maybe if I feel really, really, really bad or, or make a huge, huge promise, then maybe he'll finally forgive me over these things. No, that puts the focus on our prayers, not on how good God is. It's not how good of a prayer I can muster up. It's faith that God's a good God and he loves me and he cares for me. He's more impressed with faith than he is the form of our prayer. You can have a perfectly polished prayer, but without any faith, it's not going anywhere. The point of the passage is have faith. It comes out by having prayer, the right kind of prayer, but he's emphasizing have faith. Put the emphasis on the right thing then. I think sometimes... We pray consistently and we don't get any answers. And the reason why we don't get any answers is because it's not the prayer, it's the faith that's lacking. Are you facing something? Something big? Something, some heavy burden? And you've prayed over it and you don't see how it's going to work out. Lord, I prayed and you prayed and prayed and I prayed. And, and you'll keep praying, but you don't believe anything is going to happen then why pray? We just kind of give up sometimes. But to salve our conscience, we keep praying. But we're really not even encouraged by our prayer. We don't even expect anything. And, and God has hit me up with this. He said, yeah, this is something that's important to you. Yeah, you pray, but you don't even believe that I'm going to do anything. Whap. Ooh. Fairview Baptist Church, we need faith. It's not our prayers that please God. It's our faith that pleases God. That's what he wants from us. Have faith in God. So we see the obligation for faith, the object of our faith. That is God. Thirdly, we see the opportunity of faith. Notice with me in verse 23. He says, for Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, a couple things about this, uh, the opportunity of faith. First of all, faith is unrestricted. Important word there in verse 23, whosoever. Anybody can have faith. Anybody. This isn't just for the 12 disciples. Any of us can have faith and obtain answers to prayer. And he wants to give us, um, he wants to reward us for our faith. Secondly, not only is it unrestricted, but faith is unlimited. Look there also in verse 23. Uh, he says, whatsoever near the... Near, uh, a little bit further down, he says, What's, what things soever, actually that's verse 24, what things soever ye desire. He says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. What things soever ye desire? Ooh, whatever I want. Hmm. Now, what kind of desires is he talking about? Let's be consistent with the scriptures. 
Has God ever uh, condoned fleshly desires? No. So obviously he's talking about whatever spiritual desires you have, not your fleshly, your carnal desires. And so whatever those spiritual ones are, even if those desires seem as big as a mountain, God wants to help. Desires for our families. Any hurts in your homes? Is God big? Have faith in God. Say, but oh, I can't, I, I just, I. have faith in God. We need God. And we need to get hungry for God. And we need to believe that he can actually do something about our problems. Do you need, do you have a desire, do you have, do you have a spiritual need, a spiritual desire to have victory over sin? Why, well, I, I tried. Can I tell you something? You gotta keep trying. Victory doesn't come one time. Paul said, that he died daily. Every single day he had to say no to his flesh. And so do you and I. We have to keep fighting and keep denying and keep praying and keep having faith. Have you had some victory over sin? Well, yeah, but that was back then. Now I'm really stuck. Well, if he's given you victory in the past, he can give you victory now, amen? Amen. Let's have some faith in God that we can be clean. We can be pure. We can be right. We can think straight. We can have victory. We have such an opportunity to see God work on our behalf when we exercise faith. And after all, Hebrews 11, 6, He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let us, let this renew not just our prayers, but our faith in our prayers to come back and say, okay, Lord, I've been praying, but I haven't been praying with faith. And I'm gonna seek you diligently. I'm gonna believe that you are and that you are a rewarder and that I'm gonna see you do something here. Fourthly, we see the operation of faith. How does this thing work? Anyway, right, how does this work? It's interesting, Jesus uh, spoke to the tree in verse 14. He says, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. He just spoke to it. Basically, you're, you're done, right? And then in verse um, 21, Peter calling this to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed." is withered away. He was surprised. He said, you just spoke to it, and then this is what's happened. That really, if, if I went down and cut down a tree here this evening, by tomorrow, you know, if, 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 it, was, if it had some green leaves, we're not quite there yet, right? But the next day would still have some green leaves. It's not going to be that withered yet. But this thing... It was withered the next day. I mean, when the Lord does something, he does it right, right? <laughs> and so Peter's like, what's going on here? So I want you to see how faith works. Jesus made some statements here in verse 23 that seemed to make it pretty simple. Okay, I've got a couple of uh, these underlined in my Bible here. And it, they're simply this. Whosoever, he says, shall say, shall believe, shall have. That's it. That was his explanation of verse 22. In ver- verse 22, he says, have faith in God. And then he tells us how to do that. Shall say, shall believe, shall have. Okay, I'm, I'm not making this up. I'm just telling you what God said. So here's what it looks like. First of all, we see he's, 
shall say. That means saying something involves stating something. And actually, when we pray, we are talking. We're asking God something. In Joshua chapter 10, you don't have to turn there, but if you want the reference, it's chapter 10, verse 12. Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stand still. And they did. How did that happen? Well, here's the answer. Faith. He's in the midst of a battle, right? He said it, believing God would do it, and he did it. He didn't have a long prayer meeting. He's serving the Lord. He's in the midst of battle, and he needed God's help, and he expected it, and he just called out to the Lord and said, it's interesting, that verse is, and he, 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 he talks to the Lord, and then he says, son, stand now still, and, 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 and moon, right? And faith is to trust God and just state what's needed. Just, this is what, Lord, this is what's needed. Say it. That's where it begins. Say it. Well, it was in my heart. Well, good. Get it out of the heart and let it come out the lips and, and, and let's follow the process that God says to do. Now, faith is trusting God. It's not exploiting him. You know, faith's not shaking him down to get what you want and what you, what, what you want out of him, okay? That's, uh, that's the name it and claim it crowd. You say, well, that kind of seems like name it and claim it. And there it says, shall say shall believe, shall have. Um, you know, they forgot the, 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 the desires part. Oh, yes, yes they, they don't forget that at all. They say whatever you want, you get. No, they forgot the rest of the part of the Bible where it talks about what kind of desires we should have, right? No, when you have a real need, though, you can confidently state that to the Lord and expect him to provide it. So, shall say then shall believe. Here's the key. We've got to believe. And believe that God is interested in working on our behalf and in our life. Okay? Is he interested in your home? Yes. Is he interested in, your vic in victory over sin? Yes. And in, in any kind of spiritual battle you face, he's interested in that. Much of what we call faith is, is, um, is meager or empty. Um, how many times do you pray that God would uh, meet your needs, but you don't expect him to do that? Lord, help this person, but you don't expect them to change. Uh, help my witnessing efforts, but then we don't go out and witness, whatever it is. How frequently do we get discouraged when uh, we intercede for someone we're praying and praying, and nothing seems to happen. And so we'll just, okay, Lord, in your timing, pray to do something here. And we've lost that heart. We've lost that faith. We've lost that expectation. Jesus was saying here, true faith moves mountains. It obtains promises. And what we have got to come to, and again, this is what God was dealing with me on, is that we, we can't be satisfied with a feeble faith that just limps through life accomplishing little. I don't want to accomplish little. I don't have many years left. Well, I'm not predicting anything, but... <laughs> on the relative grand scheme of things, okay? I'm counting those years down, and I'm like, hmm, that's, yeah. We have got to be trusting God and, and asking him to help us. And in most cases, it's, it's not our prayers that are ineffective. It's our faith that's lacking, right? I would imagine a lot of people here pray. Some have prayer lists. And you faithful to go through those prayers and nothing happens. Well, it's just not God's timing. It might not be, but it also might be we just don't have faith. We got prayers, but we don't have any faith to back them up. Somewhere along the line, we forgot that God was who he said he was and that what he, could, what he did for us in the past, he can do it for us 
in the present. And so we see how this thing, faith thing works, the operation of faith. He says, shall say, shall believe, and then shall have. When we meet God's requirement of faith, we can expect him to work. And many times we pray for things we don't think it's going to happen, and then all of a sudden he starts dealing with us about trusting him and having faith, and we get faith going again, and we're praying along the line beforehand. We're praying. We're discouraged in our prayers. Lord, you ever get that way? You start out with your prayer list, and by the time you're done with your prayer list, you're all in discouragement. Well, this you've got to help here, and you've got to work here, and by the time you're done, it's all those things that he needed to do and he hasn't done, you're just like, this is never going to happen. But you don't say that, but it's like, that's what's going on in the heart. Well, maybe that's why we don't have things happening. Because we're all discouraged and we don't really have that faith. He says it's pretty simple. Shall say, shall believe shall have. Let me give you the fifth thing. We see uh, some obstacles of faith. There are two obstacles that he mentions here. Uh, the first one is found there in verse 23, about the middle of the verse, and that's doubt. Let me read this verse again, and we'll stop at that part. It says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not Doubt in his heart, but shall believe. Not doubt in his heart. That's what gets us, doesn't it? It's that doubt. So the word doubt means to waver. You know, back and forth. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. It also means to stagger. In fact, that word is also translated as stagger. The same word is translated as stagger in Romans chapter 4, verse 20, when it's talking about Abraham and his faith. It says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. He staggered not. He doubted not. I think a lot of times we stagger in our faith. Faith... Real faith doesn't waver, doesn't stagger, doesn't hesitate. Um, people tend to stagger. You got to get your, out of your. If you have in your mind the drunkard who's just stumbling and staggering all over the place, I don't think that's quite the the idea here that is is mentioned. To stagger uh, means that you're unsure of your footing. Okay. If I took a one-foot uh, beam and I ran it across the whole platform, I could walk across that one-foot one foot wide beam. I could walk across that, no problem at all. I might even trot a little bit. Now, if you take that one-foot uh, one beam, one-foot wide beam, and lift it 50 feet off the ground, I'm not trotting. In fact, I'm going to be very unsteady. All my confidence is totally gone. I'm going to be like both arms out, you know, taking like little baby steps, doing the Joe Biden's shuffle. <laughs> okay. Anyway, sorry. I'm going to be really careful. Why? Because I'm going to, I'm a, I'll be scared to death if I slip. That's one foot. I mean, one foot. My feet aren't that wide. I, I can do this okay. But one little slip from 50 feet up, it's okay if I die, but if I break my neck and I'm in a wheelchair the rest of my life, that's not okay. So I'm, I'm going to be afraid. And fear and apprehension make us unstable in our walk of faith, too. We start doubting. We start fearing. We start 
getting filled with anxiety. Ah, I don't know if God is going to do this. And now our faith is unstable. Listen, if the Lord has spoken to us through his word about something, should we fear to do it? No. Is he dependable? Yes. Whether you're on ground level or 50 feet up in the air, right? Those apprehensions should be gone. So let's not have doubt. Because that really is an obstacle of our faith. It hinders our faith. There's something else here. Um, not only doubt, but secondly, unforgiveness. And it seems interesting. Verses 25 and 26 are just tucked in at the end of this passage on having faith. And they really don't seem to have any place here. Um, let me read them for you. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. It seems, to me at least, that the Lord wanted the disciples to realize that in order to exercise faith, they had to have a pure heart. They couldn't have aught against anyone else, against the brethren. They couldn't, have a, 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 they couldn't be bound by a lack of forgiveness. And what does a lack of forgiveness usually lead to? It leads to bitterness. So let me ask you then. Do you have aught against someone? Do you have a little bit of bitterness? And maybe it's not even a little bit. Maybe it's just point blank. It's a lot. Someone has hurt you. And you're not happy. And you've been, you've been fine with letting people know you're not happy. And when we harbor that bitterness and those hard feelings, but this family member, they, they hurt me. They don't realize what they've done to me. No, they might not. But having bitterness is going to hinder your faith and your prayers. Because we have to come to God believing that he is, and coming on his terms. And one way he wants us to come to him is with the attitude and spirit of forgiveness toward other people. And if we're hanging on to bitterness, you can go through your prayer list, but your faith is hindered. You say, but that person in the ministry burned me. Yeah, that happens. They let me down. Mm -hmm. Been there. I've had people in the ministry let me down. Can I tell you something? I'm in the ministry and I've let people down. And that, that burns me that I've let people down. And it burns me that I've been let down. And you know what I have to do? I have to, I have to ask God Help me to forgive those who've hurt me. And I hope people would forgive me if I've hurt them, whatever. But the idea is we've got to move forward. And we have to move forward by faith. If this church is going to move forward, you've got to, we're, we're going to have to move forward by faith. Setting aside differences. In the home, if you're struggling... With, with hardships and bitterness and hurts in the home, we've got to set aside. But you don't know what they did to me. No. But God does. And he says, when you stand praying, forgive. That's what he says. So it's what we, that's what we do. We forgive. But when we doubt, and we're not putting that confidence in God that he can do everything he says he can do. And we have this bitterness in our heart towards someone because they've wronged us, they've hurt us, and I'm just not going to let it go. Well, then we're not going to have 
true faith in our prayers. We can keep going through our prayer lists. We can be faithful with our prayer routines. We can come to prayer meetings. Don't expect much. Faith is a hard issue. And that's where we need to get to. Lord, here's something that you've spoken to my heart about. Here's a need I have, whatever it is. And Lord, I'm coming to you. And I believe that you are God. That you are able to do what I can't do. And I believe that you want me to get past my own feelings of uncomfortableness and my own feelings of hurts and pains and trust that you're able to work in this situation. So have you allowed either doubt or bitterness to hinder you and to hinder your faith? God wants to reward us, but we've got to meet his conditions. I'd like for you to turn with me back to Psalm 59 as an illustration. I was just reading this the other day, and it just jumped out at me like it, it never have, has in the past. Psalm 59, uh, this passage seems to me at least, uh, to encapsulate what Jesus had taught his disciples about faith. I want you to look with me, Psalm 59, this is the Psalm of David. Look with me in the title, okay? Um, but halfway through, after it says, Mictam of David, he says, when Saul, so this is a Psalm that he wrote, when Saul sent and they watched the house to kill him, okay? So this is when he's writing this psalm. I don't know about you, but if I'm someone out there, a bunch of soldiers out there, the enemies out there, waiting to pounce on me and kill me, I might be looking out the window or trying to find a way to build up a barrier so they can't get in my window I, or find some way to get out or some, find some way to distract them. I would probably be praying, yes, but I want you to see the composure that he had, okay? And it, to me, this is just stunning. They're out there getting ready. They're, they're, they're getting ready. They're, they want to kill him. They're planning to kill him. And here's David. We find him in verse 1. Deliver me from mine enemies, O oh my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me. From the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. And then he continues, but what does he do? He first of all, remember the little process Jesus said? Whosoever, you know, he said, shall say. So here he is, he's saying, he's praying, he's talking to God. He's saying, deliver me, defend me. So he's, he's making it clear what he needs God to do. Now look with me in verses 9 and 10. He actually believed what he prayed. So shall say, shall believe, okay? And so verses 9 and 10, because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. So now he's not just saying, God, defend me. Now he's saying, God is my defense. He's completely convinced that God is going to do this. Then he says in verse 10, The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. So he said, I'm going to see what happens to them. And so he was fully persuaded he believed that what he prayed, God was going to do. And then, so, shall say, shall believe. The next step is shall have. And that's where we see down in verse number 16. He said, but I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy. And this is the phrase that I, I just, I, the other day I just underlined in my Bible. I will sing of, uh, aloud of thy mercy in the morning. Wait a minute, in the morning, he expected to get through the night? 
Absolutely. He expected to get through the night because he had prayed. And he believed that God would defend him. And how do we know if he got through the night? Um, it's David. He lived quite a while and he didn't die after this occasion. He received what he prayed for. It's interesting. In the morning, right? People planning to kill him and he expected to see the morning? He had faith. He had faith. Implied is he had some rest in there too. I don't know how much rest I'd have been having, you know. <laughs> Taking a few more peeks out the window. He did not doubt that God was going to answer his prayer. And so, the question, the question and the title of the message was, do you have faith? Because God says, have faith in God. Didn't ask if you're praying. You know, sometimes we, we hear a message on prayer and, and we come forward and we pray. And it's, a lot of times it's not the people who are not praying that come forward and pray. It's the people who do pray. You say, why are they coming forward and praying? Because maybe they're not getting the answers. Well, maybe we're not getting the answers is, is because of what Jesus was talking about here. It's not that we're not praying. It might be for some, but in many cases, it's we don't have faith. God is who he says he is, and he can do anything and everything. And sometimes we're not convinced of it. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.